the fan favorite segment, the fan zone is on air. Of course, this is the touchline on Y254. My name is Max Olwasika. Very good afternoon and welcome back to the program. We're discussing matters in international football with focus with, uh, on what has been trending. And remember this particular evening, a pulsating clash pitting Arsenal against Chelsea Football Club happening at 8.30 p.m. East African time. What do you think will be the outcome? Keep talking to us at Wasike Max or at Y254 channel. Hashtag touchline Y254. Joining me. Are, they call themselves pandits and they're gonna dissect and analyze uh, the headlines even the transfers Gonzalo Higuain is going to Chelsea Football Club on loan Aaron Ramsey has joined Juventus from Arsenal Football Club after you know less playing opportunities from new coach Unai Emery Webster Mangi good to have you on board happy new year thank you thank you thank you how have you been fine thank you Ronaldo Koth yeah how is your entity doing man and we haven't seen each other this particular year the last time we met i think, I think it last year but one last year but one <laughs> <laughs> you man looking nice where you headed to uh, thank you no it's my weakness <laughs> <laughs> and by the way i told you next time i'm calling you on the show don't don't look smarter than i am man you know i'm the host uh, and sort of your boss bro kindly what's up me, kindly pardon me for today <laughs> <laughs> all right webster talk to us about uh, about about uh, of course what has just faded out there. Peter Cech heroic saves during his times at both Chelsea Football Club and Arsenal. Is he a Chelsea or Arsenal legend? What do you think yourself? Definitely a Chelsea legend. Why he's a Chelsea not legend? An legend. <laughs> Look at what he's accomplished at Chelsea. Four Premier League titles, four FA Cups, a European Cup, a Europa League, and many more that maybe I've not mentioned. Uh, at Arsenal, he's won a solitary FA Cup. So, and at Arsenal, he wasn't the monster goalkeeper he was at Chelsea. Last season, he made about, what, six errors leading to goals. <laughs> uh, and uh, that coming from a keeper who was once world class, who was once mentioned in the same breath as uh, the greats of that time, Ika Casillas, Edwin Van der Sar. Oliver Kahn, Edwin Van der Sar. Uh, it's a shame really so uh, i i don't uh, are, you, are, you, are, are, you, are you talking like that from objectivity point of view or because you are a national supporter who feels frustrated no with what actually, has been happening at the club no actually when when check came in i expected him to save us 15 points a season <laughs> but now it ended uh, he ended up uh, he would barely save us even nine or ten you see so when you look at the hair at Man United, sometimes he even carries the team on his back on his own. So just imagine what the hair would accomplish if he actually got a better back line in front of him. So yeah, I, I also think that uh, he was poorly coached at Arsenal. There, there was a lot wrong in the coaching because how comes he, he was so good at Chelsea and he looked so bad at Arsenal sometimes? I think there was something to do with that. Ronald, of course, what yeah. determines the legendary status of a player? Is it because of the you know duration he stayed at the club or the achievements, the cups, titles he's won? Because like Robin Van Persie, there is an argument and uh, you know a debate yeah. that is going on over uh, his legendary status, whether he's a Man United legend or an Arsenal legend. Because at <laughs> Arsenal, he yeah. didn't win, you know, anything English Premier League title. But yeah. you know, at Man United, even f uh, getting signed by Alex Ferguson and staying at Old Trafford for, I think, one season, and you know, imagine as that year's top scorer uh, banging in close to 25 goals and even winning an English Premier League title with 20 time English Premier League champions. What determines the legendary status of a player? Uh, I wanted to say that uh, at Arsenal he didn't win anything meaningful, but I remember uh, we have webs <laughs> <laughs> on set. But anyway, I think what determines say, legendary status for any player is the duration he has stayed in the club. It doesn't matter how many trophies mm. he won, because mm. who, if we look at maybe some other clubs, who he, we have players who've dedicated all their mm. all their life in that particular club, mm. and they've not won any 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 cup at all. Mm. But at the end of the day, at the end of their playing career, that's that's it considered legend. So I think mm. Peter Cech he was more of a, a legend at Chelsea than Arsenal because. I think at, at Arsenal he didn't have that uh, that good run like the way he did at Chelsea. But uh, I'd like also to disagree with Webster because I think Webster is saying that maybe the coaching was bad. But I don't think the coach, coaching was bad. I think the guys who are playing around him or who are trying to maybe play in front of him as the defenders, I think they were the ones exposing him. That's why we saw him conceding a lot of cheap goals. In the recent past, we've seen, we, we've seen the, the, the current best goalkeeper in the world, who to me is De Gea. 
he's considered also some cheap and silly goals but it doesn't mean that at the end of the day he's a bad goalkeeper i think it's just about maybe the defense that he, is working with the goalkeeper at that time. So I think Peter Cech, he's more of a legend of Chelsea because of the number of years he spent there. And for almost 15 years in the Premier League, I think that's a very illustrious career to me, who a man who should be celebrated both at Arsenal and both at Chelsea. Webster Mwangi, let's talk about uh, the goalkeeping prowess. David mm. De Gea, especially after last weekend's mm. exploits against Tottenham Hotspur, a lot has been talked about him. But considering Man United has also considered uh, plenty of goals since Alisson, the Brazilian joined Liverpool from Roma. He's been, you know, pandits have tipped him probably the favorite in terms of the top class goalkeepers in English Premier League uh, football. But there has been this unending debate. David De Gea, is he, is, he, is he the best right now as we speak? Undoubtedly. Who else would you pick over him? Kepa? Alisson? Manuel Neuer? Uh, Manuel Neuer. Um these uh these uh we have uh Kayla Navas. No, no, no. It's De Gea, definitely. Yeah. He, this guy is the best goalkeeper in the world by some distance at the moment as we speak. Anyone you pick to be second, uh, uh, they are miles away because Allison is still coming into his own. Allison, if he has another two, three seasons like this, now we can give him now that benefit of doubt but remember one can easily create an argument he has Virgil van Dijk in front of him so he doesn't have a lot to do one can easily create that argument but he's a good goalkeeper trust me but the hair has been around for a long time he yeah. won the Europa League I actually noticed his consistency has been quite tremendous exactly I actually noticed him when they won the Europa League in 2012 Is it 2012 or 2010 2010 10 when Diego Forlan scored twice. That's when I noticed the hair. And Sir Alex Ferguson wasted no time in bringing him in. So he's been around for a while. So for me, the hair is the best. Your opinion and thoughts with regards to <coughs> I think, uh, goalkeeping uh, prowess, you uh, read from the same script with him without on this one? Without a doubt, without a doubt. Because I think if you look at, uh, I think what makes a, goal, a good goalkeeper is the difference between him and when the team is struggling. We've seen the gear, what he's done at Manchester United, even when the team was down on the low, when they were conceding a lot of goals. I think he was the main man in that team. I think uh, at, some call, at some point he was being called the saviour of Manchester United because most of the time they would have gone ahead and very, lost many games, but through the game, I think the, he really saved the day. So to me, he's undoubtedly be the best goalkeeper in the world currently, and uh, he's not much to with anyone. Transfers are happening. Arsenal, <laughs> uh, despite what is being talked about them, last weekend they got beaten by mm. West Ham and Samir Nasri mm. making a, a comeback after, mm. you know, a few years without active football and he did sparkle against his former mm. club and he did get booed mm. as well by Arsenal mm. fans, especially with regards to what he did leaving mm. Arsenal, joining Manchester City mm. and winning a silverware with mm. them, right? Mm. But let's talk about the transfers and mm. Gonzalo Higuain mm. is joined the Chelsea Football Club from Juventus on loan. There's been this talk and comparison between Gonzalo Higuain and, and, and Real Madrid talismanic striker uh, called uh, Karim Benzema. And you know, some people have argued that uh, Be uh, Gonzalo, the Argentine international, ought to have been retained and maybe Real Madrid should have sold or loaded Benzema mm. at the expense of, you know, a man who's just, who's just joined Chelsea mm. alone. What do you think yourself and what do you make of that acquisition? Top lad, okay. and oh. it will improve the attacking options for Chelsea? Okay, it's a double-edged sword for me. Because uh, Higuain is clearly now getting past his best. Chelsea really don't have an option out there. They need someone who can come out, who can come in and get the job done. Higuain is the only available option to them at the moment. You see, because in January, you will not get a striker who will come, uh, a top-class striker, one for the long term in January because most of the teams are looking at we want to compete for the Europa League we want to compete for leagues we want to compete for the Champions League we want to finish in the top four so for me Higuain looks more like a stopgap because at age what 30 30 he should be 30 um, and we've seen he's been past his best but at his best he's virtually unplayable we saw him score 36 goals 
in 35 games in Serie A. That, that for me, uh, the, for the longest time I've watched football, I have not heard of a single striker who has scored 36 goals in Serie A. That's a very tough league in terms of defending. The defend I think it's, it's, the, it's the most competitive league in Europe, right? Not really, but toughness, the toughness. You know, there is a time Serie A was very prestigious. But now it's La Liga and the Premier League. Yeah. But Serie A is tough. You know, the defenders there, they defend by all it's means necessary. So at the end of the day, for him to put up those numbers makes him... It made him an elite marksman let, let, at that time. Uh, uh, Ronald, let's just have a look at what's on our screen, the comparison between Gonzalo Higuain and Alvaro Morato, who's been quite blunt since he joined Chelsea Football Club. 22 appearances for Gonzalo, and he scored eight goals, and you know contributed in two assists, while Alvaro Morata, the Spanish international, 24 appearances, he scored nine goals and assisted. Nothing. If, if <laughs> going by <laughs> going by the statistics, the statistics. Yeah. So Morata, <laughs> I think qualifies if, to be if, if, a better player than yeah, if, you at, if you look at these statistics, I think uh, they are more of the same type of players mm. because uh, they both play twenty twenty more most of the same games, scored almost the same number of goals, and also one has assisted two goals, the other one has, hasn't assisted. So to me, I think uh, maybe the reason why Sarri has brought him to Chelsea is because he worked with him at Napoli, mm -hmm. so probably he knows him better. But to me, if I look at uh, the man who would who would have maybe suited best to play at Chelsea. Was Callum Wilson of uh, Bournemouth yeah. because at some point there were talks that maybe he was going to Chelsea. So I don't know why they, maybe they didn't go through but if you look at the dynamics of the EPL and all that I think the person who should have maybe went to Chelsea to maybe try and boast at that uh, attacking side to me would have been Callum Wilson but uh, maybe Sarri has his own plans and maybe probably he'll be bringing out the best of Higuain at the, at, at the moment and uh, what I like about Higuain as a striker is that uh, he may not be one of the most skillful players one of the most fastest players mm -hmm. but he has that th that willingness to fight you know to work hard so he's more of a hard worker he's more of a workhorse more than those technically gifted players so to me I think yeah. uh, looking at the way Chelsea plays He'll maybe he will, he will adapt well to the to the style that Chelsea play. Looking at the people who will be supporting you, the likes of Kante, who's, who now we, we are seeing likes to go up front and maybe to support to support the attack. So I'm interested to see how maybe he'll turn out. What is the fate of 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 uh, Olivier Giroud? <laughs> Probably <laughs> after the acquisition of Gonzalo Higuain, his chances of playing now are limbo. Yeah, in, in fact, in any team, it doesn't matter where you play. In any team, I've been a striker. If you see maybe your coach bringing in some two strikers on board definitely you know your your, your, your position is is done he's in jeopardy yeah he's in jeopardy so i think for Giroud, maybe it's time maybe it looks for maybe on loan somewhere or maybe try to get a club where he'll be trying to get some playing time because even in the past we've seen hazard being played as a false nine and yes the, and yet we have morata and Giroud in the bench so i think it speaks a lot and maybe some they should start thinking of the future because the position probably is going Overall transfers, uh, Aaron Ramsey moving to Juventus and Mesut Ozil, a discussion over his transfer also in the offing, considering that he's not getting regular playing time under Unai Emery, Arsenal not doing very well. Do you mm. think you're going for big guns? Well, um, clearly, Emery is doing what any new manager does. Come into the football club, you imprint your philosophy on the players, and you get the players to buy into your philosophy. Now, for Mesut Ozil, he has not yet bought into that philosophy as per the body language of the manager. Because if you're buying into that philosophy, the manager would be playing you often. So, and would be picking you often, even if it's on the bench. We've seen players who have improved like Mustafi and Granny Chaka. They are not there, but we've seen an improvement in terms of their play, in terms of their positions. In terms of making mistakes, though we saw Granit Xhaka make one error that led to a goal last week, but overall he's improved as a player. We, we look at Mesut Ozil, uh, it's a double-edged sword, meaning that he is that one player we missed at West Ham, ironically. Because if we had him, we would have opened them up so many times. But according to the manager, the manager doesn't feel like Ozil is part of his plans. But for now, what Unai Emery should do, it would be wise to use him against the smaller teams. We normally, you've had Arsenal fans say he's, in fact, rival fans, he's um, effective against the smaller teams. Then play him against the smaller teams because he's on 350,000 uh, quid a week. 
so play him against the smaller teams then against the big teams you can have him on the bench and maybe bring him when things are not going so well up until the remainder of the season for Aaron Ramsey uh we have seen this was we we really the only part we can blame una is he's not starting him and he should start against west ham he came he changed the game we were not able to break them down against tottenham he came and changed the game and we won a game that we were losing so for now i suggest that una uses ramsey and ozil whilst they are still available because ramsey's problem is a we cannot really blame Unai for all Ramsey leaving that blame Gazidis and Wenger and uh, Kroki <laughs> you you can only blame him for not playing him because he's still a national player till the end of the season you see so there is a very big difference when it comes to Ramsey leaving Unai is not to blame but when it comes to Ramsey playing and starting then Unai has a has a case to answer for that Six straight wins for Laguna Solskjaer since he took over from uh, Jose Mourinho, the Portuguese international, who parted ways with Man United over a string of poor performances and results. And there has been, you know, even a pronouncement from Man United that, you know, Gareth Southgate, the man who's, you know, inspired the three Lions of England to World Cup semi final in Russia, now becoming uh, also uh, amongst the names that are getting fronted for you know full managerial job at united what do you think yourself this short list and I mean, considering that mauricio pochettino has said that he, he probably will retire at Tottenham Hotspur, and a lot has been said yeah. about pochettino that maybe he's not ambitious or he fears challenge but i tend to think maybe he's got some project that he wants to accomplish exactly at, at the spurs yeah what do you think about the short list in terms of the managerial names that are getting fronted for you know a to take over? tacticianship job yeah. at united well i'm even surprised that manchester united are looking for a permanent manager and the the, the, the guy they already have uh, sitting on that chair, i think is doing a very remarkable job so to me i don't think they should be looking for another manager maybe just try and tie down olegun on long-term basis because whatever he's been doing six straight wins i think the team we, we are seeing a totally new manchester united side and this is a guy who's been in the in this club as a player and now he's returning back as a, as a manager so i think he knows the dynamics of uh, manchester united as a club he knows the way the teams should play you know what's expected of the boys and i think he's bringing out the best of of some of those guys in fact uh, the main victim being pogba i think under Mourinho is so pogba mm. registering some poor performance and uh, now with the uh, oleguna on board i think we are seeing the best of pogba scoring goals and maybe assisting i think everybody everyone every, everyone is just rejuvenated in the team so mm. to me looking at this short list i don't think anybody among among all those people should little i think oleguna is the best man for the job because i think he's already doing it well and probably just about continuity and for the lacks of pochettino i think pochettino he did, he rejected a, an offer from real madrid so i don't think manchester united have, has anything it takes maybe to make him leave tottenham so to me Webster, maybe oleguna yes. is the right man for the job you think mauricio pochettino is less ambitious and if he has challenge no <laughs> okay uh, considering the two lucrative offers he's uh -huh. turned down real madrid and man united if, I, if 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 you know what's being talked about i i think for is pochettino is uh maybe every human being has the fear of the unknown because um, the clubs that are after him remember are two very huge clubs immense clubs with a rich history and uh they have a fearsome uh, uh they have a reputation that's what you are mike okay from the middle okay yes. they have a reputation for being very intolerant to failure real madrid will not give you the time spurs will give you neither will man united especially at this time real madrid are going through a, tr a transition man united have had enough they now want someone who will come and get the job done so polished name yes they just want they i don't think the fans the man united fans care care who walks through the halls of old trafford they just want someone who will come and get the job done they have spent a lot of money since 2014 you look you're looking at about 300 million pounds 
isn't it? Yeah. So they want someone to come and get the job done. And Ole Gunnar Solja is using football common sense. I would say that. What he's doing, he has motivated these players to go out there and play and also defend as a unit. Because United's defensive work is being overlooked and underrated. But they are defending pretty very... They are, de they are, they are defending is pretty good. Because if you look at them, they are not defending... They, they, you don't see that outstanding defender like Van Dijk or uh, Laporte or uh, company. They're defending as a unit, as a team. They are hunting for they are hunting that ball like a pack of dogs. You see, <laughs> that's what they are doing. They are they, they 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 when they don't have the ball, they hunt to win it back. And when they have it, they hurt you with if it. If they continue with this form, what do you think about their Champions League clash against French money backs, Paris Saint Germain? They I can... know I don't give them a chance against PSG because <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so, uh, no disrespect, but. <laughs> You see, when you come up against Neymar and Mbappe and Cavani, up those, front. That, uh, yeah. that's a different animal. That's a different body. Maybe game. this is the time they need to <laughs> hurry up and acquire the services of uh, Napoli defenders. Yes, Kulibali. Kulibali. You <laughs> give them a chance if they got him in. Yeah. But you see, ne Neymar, is, Neymar is not only gifted, but he also has, he, he is also practicing the dark arts of football. You see him diving here and there. <laughs> Can United be able to contain, to, to contain themselves? Maybe the new man, uh, Victor Lindelof, will contain him. I've seen a lot much praise you know, on him after his season. Okay, exploits. containing him is one thing, but when he starts those antics, will you <laughs> be able to keep your cool? <laughs> that's that's where the, the it comes in. Because Neymar does that, you start kicking him, and Mbappe and Cavani, Cavani run on the other you. side. Yes. So... Anyway, uh, United have a chance. If they continue with this form, they have a chance. But huge, huge setback for Tottenham Hotspurs. Their talismanic figure, a man who scored several goals for them. You know, a man who's been rated in the class of the likes of Alan Shearer. You know, scoring over uh, mm. 20 plus goals in four consecutive seasons, if I'm not wrong, and getting into the list of the, the likes of Shearer, the likes of Thierry Henry, Ruud Van Nistelrooy. Mm. Huge blow, and considering that Tottenham has got huge and tough assignments ahead of them, and his comeback is likely to be in March, two months from now, as we speak, will they stand the test of time? I think uh, I think they will because uh, if you look at the guys who've been playing at the front together with him, I think uh, maybe it's time for maybe other boys to maybe try and step up and maybe fill his shoes because uh, it. it much has been said that maybe he's the reason behind Spurs' success because if he's not scoring, the team is struggling. So I think it's time for maybe the other guys who have been playing around him, the likes of Dele Ali, maybe mm -hmm. to try and step up their shoes and fill, fill in those boots. So, but it will be a tough time maybe trying to play without him. And I'm interested also to see how maybe Spurs will be moving forward in the next games without their talismanic forward man. Good chance now for Jansen to be given an opportunity to play. They have no choice. Get regular football. I, yes. Uh, no, Spurs, okay. Jansen, I, yes, Jansen could have an opportunity. It depends whether he'll get and it. And Son is also gone for exactly. Asian Cup. Yeah. Yes, now Jansen has to play. Because when Son comes back, what Pochettino will do, he will play either Lamela or Lucas Mora on the flanks. And Musa Dembele has also left. <laughs> yes, but you see they have cover. In midfield, I don't think they have much of a problem. But up front, that's where they have a bit of a problem. And if Spurs don't score goals, they will not win enough games. Yeah. And now that gives room for United and Arsenal to fight for the last top four place. And um, okay, the top four will now be determined by tonight's game. If Arsenal win it, they blow it wide open. If Chelsea win it, now they fortify their place. And now that gives United the chance to leapfrog Arsenal and maybe make a top four claim of their own. Now with Spurs a bit shaky. Kenyans, Kenyans took to social media, especially Twitter, mm -hmm. celebrating over uh, Dembele's departure. Now mm. with the hoping that our very own, the captain for mm. the national team, Arambe Stars, Victor Anyamu, will start getting more of playing time especially in the middle of the park but even as we speak about mm -hmm. him he's also out injured alongside Musa mm -hmm. Sissoko and Eric Dyer 
unending predicaments at White Hart Lane? Well, uh, for Wanyama, Wanyama is a similar player to Eric Dyer. I've had this, I uh, have had this debate, endless debate with uh, football fans in other forums where I have voiced, I feel that when Wanyama is fit, he's a better defensive midfielder than Eric Dyer. Exactly. And I stand by that, and I go on record saying that. A fully fit Wanyama and a fully fit Dyer, Wanyama all day. But now, as it stands, injuries have robbed him of that opportunity to really showcase what Mauricio Pochettino had seen at, at Southampton. Southampton and Celtic. Yes. Actually, now, Dyer is the main defensive midfielder. Wanyama cannot play as, an, as a quarterback, as they call it, in a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3. He can only play as an anchor, and that is Eric Dyer's position now. But now that leaves room for Harry Winks. And maybe even, I think, I don't know about you, Ronald, but I think Christian Eriksen can be a fantastic central midfielder alongside a good defensive midfielder. He, he can play the way Cazola was playing for Arsenal in that deep midfield role. So I don't think Spurs have a problem in that in that position. And talking about Engl uh, European football, of course, several fixtures lined up this particular weekend in English Premier League football. Wolverhampton playing host to Leicester at 3.30 p.m. Then at 6 p.m. Bournemouth lock horns against West Ham United. And remember, West Ham beat Arsenal, cost an upset at the Upton Park, beating Arsenal by 1-0, hoping to see whether Samir Nasser will feature again for the second time after making a stylish comeback into football limelight under Manuel Pellegrini, who coached him at, by the way, Manchester City when he left Arsenal, joining them to win a silver. Well, Lee, uh, Crystal Palace will be having a tough assignment against Liverpool at the Anfield. Man United hoping to continue with their resurgent form against Brighton, who, by the way, and and luckily, they lost to Liverpool mm. uh, by a solitary goal. And then Newcastle play Cardiff, Soton play Everton, Watford against Burnley. Then big game, Arsenal mm. against Chelsea mm -hmm. at the Emirates. Ronald Okod, yeah. will you be watching yourself? <laughs> uh, definitely, that's a big game. And uh, if you're not watching that game, then maybe something's wrong with you. <laughs> but uh, it's it will on on paper. I think both both sides have a good opportunity to maybe get the better of each other. And uh, to me, looking at the, the uh, Arsenal's current form, I think. Uh, They've been conceding at times, but to me, Chelsea, they stand a better chance of winning this match because they're rejuvenated. And, and then Hazard, I think Hazard has been the main anchor man at Chelsea. Yeah. And uh, even though we can say that maybe even Arsenal itself has a very good player like Obama Young playing up front. So to me, I'm, I'm only I'm, I'm, I'm so interested to see how the, the match will turn out because it's a crack of a game that can go either side. Yeah. Both managers uh, not well used to each other because they were uh, in different leagues. Mm. Unai Emery. Mm in France with Paris Saint-Germain mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Maurizio Sarri with Napoli in Italian Serie A. The dynamics and the aspects in terms of, you know, uh, tactical strategies and even technical, you know, schemes that uh, probably they going to apply if each one of them has to pick three maximum points. Okay. Uh, Sarri will do what Sarri does. Sarri as, ball. As, as, the, as the Chelsea fans affectionately, uh, affectionately call it Sarri ball. Joginho will anchor the midfield. Golo Kante will get the license to roam about. <laughs> so um, then they will have Eden Hazard as the main man. And they do know that Arsenal's defense is at, is, it's weak. So when you have Hazard running at you, you'll, he'll cause all sorts of problems. Yeah. But now they don't have a center forward who can finish these chances. Arsenal, on the other hand, for me, who I picked to win the game, by the way, uh, it will all depend. If Ozil and Ramsey start, we will win at Akanta. You will win at Akanta? Yes, and I mean it, at Akanta. We will win. Because when these two are playing, you see, Ozil has a point to prove. You know, um, I have been criticized for being an Ozil hater, as they call it. But You're always Ozil, saying that it's... Yeah, so lazy. He's lazy. You, you know now. Um, is in that his nature of play? You know, if you're lazy and you're playing like Bakamp or Babatov, we will forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bakamp was not the hardest of workers. Yeah. Neither was Babatov. But Babatov scored. His, became his, his, his ball control was quite exceptional. Exceptional. <laughs> not only and, at first, but even at yes, Man United. Yes, and Ozil is a similar type of player. His vision, his 
ball control is second to none in that Arsenal team. And in the Premier League, is among the best. But you have to get the goods. You have to be consistent. Aggressive. You don't even have to be aggressive, but be consistent at what you do. You see, Ozil is very good defensively. Actually, if you look at his defensive numbers, he puts in a shift. But attacking-wise, he's been on and off. I can assure you, if he starts this game, we will win, and he'll be at the heart of everything. <laughs> then we will go to Huddersfield Town, and he will disappear, and we will lose. <laughs> that is now the problem with Ozil. I can tell you for a fact, today he has to start. He has to start. Today he has to start. Ozil and Ramsey have to start. Ronald Okoth, you are a big pundit in town. Where are you putting your money as far as this clash is concerned? It's such a mouth-watering tie happening at the Emirates. Arsenal playing host to Chelsea Football Club. The second leg of English Premier League has just kicked off and a run with regards to English Premier League, you know, yeah. championship. Manchester City and Liverpool remain the favourites for title mm. crown. But where is your money? Especially for those guys who are passionate about betting. I know they are watching and they are looking forward to hearing from you and... In, Go in, by in, your direction. In regards to disclaimer, in, 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 in disclaimer, in, in, whatever Ronald Ocot says is that for this prediction. And in case it goes haywire, I'm not responsible for anything. I'm not responsible. Maybe him is mm, responsible. responsible. Where is your money? In, in regards to who Getting will win good. the title or in regards to, to in tonight's in regards match? To th tonight's this match. This evening's tie. I think uh, looking at uh, the way both teams have been playing in the recent past, to me, Chelsea. I tip Chelsea to maybe, I know you won't like this, but mm. I tip Chelsea <laughs> to carry the day mm. because uh, Arsenal, they've been conceding a lot. They have a problem defensively, trying to maybe protect their back and also their goalkeeper, I don't think he's been mm. at his best form. The mm. guy who's been standing at the oh, between in the sticks. So to me, if I look at Chelsea and I look at a very solid team, Burnley. defensively, at the midfield mm. and even attacking, going up and attacking, who they, they'd be playing with, the uh, Hazard playing as a force line and maybe at the bench, they'd be having also two forwards who can even change the game. So to me, Chelsea, I think Chelsea stand a very good chance of carrying the day, even though I think probably both teams might even score. So it might end up to be a high-scoring game. Title run over Ali Webster? Okay, uh, let me give my prediction right, for today's right, game before right. that. Give your now, prediction, but uh, I know it's automatically yes, it's in favor of Arsenal. Yes, 2-1. Two, one. Two, one. Reason being, it all depends with the team Emery picks today. He has to pick his best players. With... Uh, Joginho anchoring the midfield if you have Ozil and Ramsey running at him you can do damage to Chelsea you know they are a different team than when Golo Kante is anchoring the midfield and their defense when you look at uh, David Luiz he is prone to one or two errors he is always an accident waiting to happen somewhere but now Antonio Rudiger covers him very very well you see Marcos Alonso is a winger, he's not a left back. So if you get someone who can run in there, in that right hand side, Chelsea's left, then you'll, you, that will be, that, that, those are areas where Arsenal can maybe get a, f yeah, a few goals here and there. But uh, defending today, they have to be diligent. Uh, that is not up for question because with Hazard and even Pedro, yeah. these are players who can harm you if you're not def at your best defense. Even William. Of late, Midland Knight being used as the fullback, mm. what do you make of that uh, choice by Unai Emery and even uh, the Nigerian uh, kid now starting uh, Alex to get playing football? That is, <laughs> I think it's, 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 it's good news to JJ Okocha, whom I'm reliably informed is the uncle. Yes, he, uh, he's Iwobi's uncle. Now, uh, with Mm, a Maitland Niles, he was the only option at fullback because uh, Lick Steiner is he th that is just a train wreck, he is a disaster, an absolute disaster. So he is the only one who can play there now. Bellerin is back, so Bellerin assumes full duties for Iwobi. Uh, Iwobi has been taking the place of Mesut Ozil and maybe make uh, Mikitarian who. Uh, I understand had a broken foot, so he'll be out for a while. Yeah. So he's been getting playing time because of that. But if Ozil starts today, we might not see Iwobi. Yes. Ma, uh, let me quickly add something. I think I'm telling you, if Unai starts those two boys, I think Arsenal will have a very long day. He can't afford to maybe start those two boys with the, at the expense of Hazard, William, and Pedro. Yes. Because I think uh, those two guys, they're still running the ropes of the game. Yes. And uh, if you remove Ozil, if you remove Ramsey mm. from uh, Arsenal, I think 
Arsenal is done. So I think uh, if maybe Unai will be starting with Ozil and Ramsey, just like Webster said, mm. I think they'll be starting a very good chance to win mm. the match. Fantastic show. It's been one to three, the touchline every Saturday happening on Y254. My name is Max Olwasike. Always a pleasure having you on board and interacting with us and talking about matter sports. Keep talking to us. Let the conversation continue via social media handles at Wasike Maxwell at Y254 channel. Hashtag touchline Y254. It's been a pleasure having you on board and thanks for coming through. Looking forward to have you next time for you know uh, further analysis of what is trending as far as matters international football is concerned but ronald a uh, big blow football uh, family uh, losing our departed hero odu cobra in that attack that happened at the yes. riverside huge setback a lot of vacuum has been left as far as kenyan football is concerned he was such a passionate lover of football and he had started this a YouTube TV channel, what TV, TV, just trying to gather views yeah. of fans with regards to Kenya Premier League, the local top tier. Huge setback, and probably our condolences to the family and those who are closely associated with him. He was quite a jovial and a passionate yeah. uh, man who didn't quarrel with anyone. What's your message? I know you are great friends. Yeah, I think. Uh to me, I even lack words to maybe express my feelings because I think it's a huge setback for us fo as former footballers, even as fans, because uh, James, he was highly involved in football, ever in the country. And uh, even with this de demise, we are seeing him being celebrated all, all over yes. the continent, actually. Mm. So I'm even surprised that he was that famous. I, I wish he knew how famous he was even while he, while he was still alive because he has been celebrated all over the continent. Just famous but like myself? <laughs> 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 Hopefully he will be one day. But uh, I think the, the, the thing I like about James is that he lived his life to the fullest, even though it's one of the most barbaric ways to lose someone who, who was so in touch with everyone. And uh, to me, we can only pray about, we can only pray for his family because he's left a very young family behind. And uh, the last time I was with uh, James, we were in Kibera, we were doing a coaching and mentoring clinic for his team. He actually has a, an academy in Kibera where he partners with one Mr. Dino Haji. And uh, he was a very he, he was a very actually he was a very great great guy who was so in touch with everyone and uh, I think his last words was uh, whatever you're doing keep on doing because I know many people are not happy about what you're doing in in, in, in relation to what I'm currently doing with my company and uh, we also had plans with him to try and venture into our own football show which you are also uh, trying Battle. to involve you yeah, yeah because uh, he has a TV station, no, he has a YouTube channel called Wadao TV, mm -hmm. where he basically speaks about football. So we had a lot of big dreams, a lot of big big plans, and unfortunately we were robbed, we have been robbed of a great, very great man, and I'm hoping maybe going forward we'll be celebrating him every year and maybe trying to keep his memories alive. So, James so Radido, James. Elias Odukobro, of course, your legacy lives on, bro, and we, co we hope that we continue doing what he was doing so that in his memory, right? Yeah. Touchline has been the show. Webster Mangi, good to have come and honored mm. uh, my request to come to the show. Arsenal is winning this particular evening. Are you sure? Yeah, um, two and I feel it. I never <laughs> bet. I never bet. But can I go by your word? Yes, Arsenal to Chelsea one. In case you ungue, the way I, I listen bet to. I bet I bet responsibly. Yes. To be safe, just put GG. <laughs> I don't know what that means. That line has been the show on Y254. My name is Max Oluwasike. Always a pleasure doing this and having you on board. Enjoy the weekend. Have a sporty weekend and always keep safe.